for example, at 60 or at 65, you will receive 70%, 60%, 50%, 40%, whatever is the number of your last wage. So that's why it is called a defined benefit. The government defines a benefit that will be paid. It's a promise of the government. Now, how does the government generally finance such a promise? Well, charging a tax to workers, sometimes also to employers. It's called a payroll tax. It's a tax uh, on labor, that is, a given proportion of your salary is taken out to pay the people who are retiring. But a, a key element to understand is that those who are paying the tax on labor are not those that are receiving the benefit. They are completely different. The workers are paying the tax and the retired people are receiving the pension. Of course, the workers hope that when they retire, other younger workers will pay future taxes to finance their own benefits. But the whole system, you see, it breaks the link between what the workers pay and what the retired people receive. There is no a clear, unique, a strong, contractual relationship between what you pay and what you receive. Now, this is a, was uh, not, of course, a Chilean or a Bulgarian or an American idea. This, uh, this idea came from Prussia in the 19th century. The, the, the creator of this idea was Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, a, a, a Prussian a prime minister, who invented this idea. And uh, he, at that time, of course, initiated this system very small, a very small payroll tax and a very small benefit. But as we know with some initiatives, a, a, a government programs begin to grow and grow, and nowadays, in almost every country of the world, the pension expenditures of the government are the largest uh, government program. For example, in the United States, the government expends $700 billion uh, in state pensions. That is, it has always been something more than the whole defense expenditure of the United States. So it's a huge government program. And the same thing happens in, in France, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, etc. That is, pensions are the biggest government program. But as I said, there is this flaw or this problem that the promises that the government make to the worker are not uh, backed by assets, by a fund. There is no money somewhere hidden. There is no fund for these promises. The government makes these promises trusting that in the future they will be able to tax the use of labor. Now, what happened with this system always, and it's not, again, a Bulgarian or a Chilean or an American problem, that's why pay-as-you-go systems are going bankrupt all over the world. Uh, two things happen. First, that when you uh, destroy the link between the contributions to the system and the benefit out of the system, uh, most people in society because of the way we humans uh, behave, try to maximize what they get out of the system by pressuring for higher pensions, by trying to retire earlier than the legal retirement age. 
sometime by trying even to have a disability pension even though some people are not disabled and fake and make a little fraud of, of getting a disability pension. So everyone in different ways try to get as much they can because they are not paying directly for that benefit. At the same time, eh, most of the people, not everyone of course, try to minimize what they contribute to the system. Because there is no relation between what you contribute and you get. How do you minimize what you contribute? Uh, first, you can tell your employer to agree on a nominal wage that is really lower than the real salary. So all over the world, sometimes employer pays 100, but only 50 is declared. And in that way, you minimize the contribution because the contribution is a fraction of the declared wage, not the real wage. Or even more, uh, more extreme, you simply can have no contract whatsoever. And that is the phenomenon of the informal labor force, of the black market economy that is uh, in all over the world, especially in small and medium companies that cannot pay these huge payroll taxes. Uh, in order to survive and in order to employ workers, they simply agree with the worker not to make a contract with several other consequences that maybe the worker will not be protected in health or will not be protected in other ways. So you have, in, in a lot of countries, I don't know Bulgaria exactly, but in, for example in Italy, in Italy you have a huge uh, black market that is uh, whenever I go to Italy, maybe half the Italian do not pay taxes, do not pay labor, labor, leaving the black market economy. And it's not that they are bad people or good people. This has nothing to do with being, be, being good or bad. It's, it's, uh, these are the incentives that a bad system creates. As I say, the incentive to minimize the contribution, the incentive to maximize the benefit. Well, when you have all the population playing this game, to put it in some way, for a long period of time, the end result has to be a disaster for the public finances, because at the end of the day, the government has to pay this. So generally, what is happening today in the world is that the government does not have enough money from the contributions to pay the promised benefits. So the government has to take money out of other areas in order to finance this gap, this deficit. So government spend less on such important things like education, like health, like nutrition, like uh, policemen to, to, to eliminate crime because they are filling the, the gap, the deficit between the benefits and the contributions. And this is happening everywhere, everywhere in, in the world. And in all the important European countries, this is happening in a, in a very big way. So I, 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 I see that in 10, 15, 20 years, maybe some big country 